lift your hand and say a thousand times more. Say, Heavenly Father, is a reality. Say, in the name of Jesus, in 2024, the little in my hands shall become a thousand, and the small shall become a mighty nation. Say, in your own time, you will do this swiftly. Say, this is your time, O Lord. Do it swiftly. 2024, a little in my hands, becoming a thousand. Small, a mighty nation. I believe, therefore, I speak. Come on, lift up your voice and begin to declare. Kaba, Shabalaya. Amen. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for the gift of 2024. Here we are, by the grace of God and by the mercies of God. We know you have great things in store for us. And so we start the year with confidence, not in ourselves, but in the name of the Lord. The Bible says, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And so we enter into this year in confidence, knowing that you've gone ahead of us and we have the victory through Christ our Lord. Tonight we are gathered again in your presence to sit at your feet and to learn from you. We ask that let the sweet Holy Spirit, the great teacher, influence our hearts and our minds. Master, speak for thy servants listening. Bless us exceedingly in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Whilst we still stand, let's quickly move into the book of Job. We're going to read quite a long passage. Let's follow it quickly, and then we'll get into the word of Job, chapter number 1, 38, I believe, from verse 1 to 12. Job 38, verse 1 to 12. All right. Everybody, let's go. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Raise yourself like a man. I'll question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Hmm. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched out a measuring line across it? All right. On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Who shut up the sea? behind doors, when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garments and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place. 11. When I said, this far you may come and no farther, here is where your proud waves halt. Mm. Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place. Let's look at this verse and 30 from KJV. From KJV. Original Kojovi. People love that version. Let's read again. Has thou commanded the morning since thy days and caused the day spring to know his place? 13. That it might take hold of the ends of the earth that the wicked might be shaken out of it. The Lord's reading. Amen. Sit down, please. Now, this powerful passage that we have just read. Wow, what's the time now? Wow. We have a few minutes, so we need to be fast. This powerful passage that we have just read is God's response to the complaints of righteous Job, to the speakings and the utterances of Job questioning God 
and the doings of God and why things are the way it was or it was happening in his life. He couldn't understand because as far as he was concerned, he was a very righteous, correct, good guy, done all the right things, never taught evil, and he started making some utterances and questioning God at the point that let God judge me in right scales and let us see if I've done anything wrong. So God listened to all the yabby yabby. Somebody say yabby yabby. Listen to, you know, God, God, <laughs> we serve a father who can handle all our, our questions and all our issues and all our, you know, some of the things we can, you, you can vent your spleen on God. It's all right. He will take it. But when he begins to talk, it's a different case altogether. So here, in this chapter, God begins to respond to Job and give him questions. Then now, brace yourself like a man and answer me even one of these questions. If you were there, if you understand, if you know what happens behind the sea? Why the, the, the clouds hang and doesn't fall? Why the sea, with all its power, has got limits? I place a limitation on the sea. Can you explain to me what happens? Why, why lions don't come out during the day to, to eat us up? Why I make them sleep at day and humans wake in the morning? Can you explain to me? Here was Job coming to his senses. Right, by the time we get to chapter 42, he said, I spoke of things I did not understand. I repent in sackcloth and ashes. Hear me, everybody. In 2024, one of the things you need to be very careful about is your words. Very careful what you say. When you don't understand things, just please shut up. Or go to God and ask for mercy. Ask for his help. Because you see, what brings us a lot of troubles in life is our words and our utterances. Especially when we think we are more righteous and other people are wrong. When we point accusing fingers and say things we shouldn't be saying to our brothers. Spread negative new gossip and all those. You need to be careful. You may be treading on dangerous grounds. First Samuel 2 verse 3. And I was saying, he said, why speak so proudly? For God judges the motive of a man's words. See, nothing outside a man defiles him. But what comes out of a man's mouth is what defiles him. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you a caution. When you don't understand anything, I remember when my spiritual father came and he was preaching, he said, when your pastor is doing something and you don't even understand, don't talk. Don't, don't open your mouth. And that statement he made was very deep because I am sure that when, when we started this move, people were saying things because they didn't understand. They don't understand the ways and the move of God. And, and, and you can stand anywhere and concoct your own stories and say anything until you come into terms with God and you understand how probably foolish you have been in saying the things you say. So be careful with complaints, with talking, I'm this, I'm this, and this person is like that, and why that? You, you, God is bigger than us all. So this is just a caution for you before I get to today's message. Alright? And then he moves straight a number of questions. None, not even one could Job answer. But this evening, I want us to look at just one of the questions, just one. And then we'll, we'll, we'll be out of this place. Verse 12 and 13, if you can get the message Bible of verse 12 and 13, when he says, can you command the morning? Can you? You have what it takes to command the morning. Everybody, let's read from the message Bible, everybody. And have you ever ordered morning? Get up and told dawn. Get to work. Verse 13. Have you heard it? So you could seize the earth like a blanket and shake out 
wicked like cockroaches. God was asking, have you ever, you Job, have you ever commanded the morning? Do you know how the morning comes? You'll be sleeping. All you know is that suddenly darkness is giving way and light is appearing. Have you ever commanded the morning? Do you know how it comes up? Do you understand how it is? Do you know how the dawn is put in this place? Can you tell the dawn, get up and work? You cannot. You just cannot. And you are, you are just, be careful of your words. Hallelujah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for tonight, I want to say that none of us can command the morning or the dawn. God has the prerequisite that is in God's domain. God is the one who commands the morning to appear and commands the dawn to come at the time it comes. It is God's prerogative. But me and you, ladies and gentlemen, can command our morning. Oh, can I preach to somebody? We can command our own morning and get it to work effectively for us. And it is a wise man that knows how to command his own morning and get it to align with the visions and the will of God for his life. And the result of commanding our morning, ladies and gentlemen, is too powerful that the church must rise up to appreciate the power behind commanding our morning. Now what does it mean to command your morning? What does it mean? It simply means to take charge of your day or your year right from the beginning. I say that again. To take charge of your day or your year right from the beginning so we can effectively say that we are in the morning of 2024 and if you are wise and smart and you want to see a thousand times more working for you this is the season to take charge of this year take charge of your day by beginning right by starting the year on the right note i like the way this particular message bible puts it he said tell the dawn get up or tell the order the morning get up and 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 the what please go back to verse 12 order the morning get up and tell the dawn get to work tell your neighbor get up get to work put it together say get up and get to work the year has begun i'm sure some people are still taxi but the year has taken off what this verse means is that hit the ground running hit the ground running set your day up and get up and get to work because what you become in 2024 is as a result of the foundation that you keep if you are clapping clap like i'm speaking to somebody everything is as a result of foundation ladies and gentlemen everything survives and lasts as a result of the strong foundation you give it and when the year starts like it, i'm sure already some people are telling why, why are we starting fasting first january be careful with your math why can't we take our time we just finished christmas why there too much church too much fasting really we are commanding our morning. We are taking off. We are getting up to work. Because the season of work is now. Whatever December 2024 will be like starts from now. It's easy to come and jump to a dreadful night. Thousand times more. The favor of the, the blessing of the Lord. No. And be snoring when we are praying. <laughs> And, and not even joining 
Really, wake your morning up and order your life. Set the tone for the, listen, even experts, psychological experts, psychiatrists and experts and coaches of life say, the, the way you start your day is what will determine the outcome of your day. The way you start your year will determine the way the year will be like for you. Because it's fundament, fun, foundational. And it's a very powerful period to command your morning and order your life aright. Get up and get to work. Don't sleep and wake up at 7, 8, 9 and you're not stretching yourself. You won't amount to much. People who have made it in life and become very successful, they have a very powerful morning routine. Hear me. Successful people don't joke with their morning routines because that set you up for what the day, the year, your business, or whatever will become like. Why do you think when Jesus was about to start his ministry, he went out there with 40 days, 40 nights, waiting on the Lord. It was the morning of his public ministry and he needed to get it right. So when we are starting the year and say we are fasting, don't talk, don't open your mouth. You don't know what this year has in store for you. You don't know the challenges that are coming. We started 2020. Nobody knew that COVID will rear its ugly head. We were just dancing around. Tell your neighbor, get up. Get to work. Order your life. Let your year begin well. Put things in order. I was reading a certain book. He said, your first hour when you wake up is called platinum hour. It's the best hour of your day. It's the best time of your day to start thinking right and to position yourself for the new day's assignment. This season we are in. Make a date first with the Lord. Angie, are you hearing me? Make a date. Have a specific time. You are not going anywhere. You are not going anywhere. You have to have a place where you meet up with the Lord. How about the virtuous woman of Proverbs chapter 31? Let's look at verse 15 quickly. Proverbs 31, 15. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She gets up whilst it is still at night. Early bed, early riser, morning routine. See, listen. Commanding your morning is a great virtue that brings provision to your life. And I say that again. Commanding your morning is a great virtue that brings what? Provision to you and your family. Provision. How many want to be provided for this year? Command your morning. Command your morning. Command your morning. There's, there's some anointing in this thing. Because we come to the New Testament and you notice that even our Lord Jesus follows the same pattern. Same pattern. Mark 1.35. A lot. I'm just giving you one example. Mark 1.35. You see it a lot in the lifestyle of Jesus. Many times it was said he woke up early in the morning. Now here we read very early in the morning. While it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. That's Jesus. I've told you this year is a Jesus year. Jesus is the ultimate standard. That's all the church is about. We've got to follow. If you, want, you don't want to follow Father Abraham, follow Jesus. He's the ultimate. He's the seed that was promised. And his short life here, this was his lifestyle. Lifestyle. I like, um, um, again, the message Bible. He said, way before dawn. So before 5 a.m. comes and the whole church is praying, you must be up. You have done one hour already. You've done one and a half hours already. 
and you are just jumping so you have by the time we start praying five you are already in the flow fired up that's commanding your morning i said that's commanding your morning causing forces of hell to to bow down making a way where there's no way causing the spirit of multiplication to multiply you thousand times more yeah 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 yeah, yeah. you've got to command your morning That's where things happen. That's where things happen. And G- notice Jesus had a spot. Abraham had a spot. You better have a spot <laughs> where we meet up with the Lord. Get a place where you can go from time to time to fellowship with the Lord and to command your day, your year, your business into action. What do you do when you are commanding your morning? What exactly? Number one, gratitude. Start with gratitude. Let your heart be filled with gratitude. It doesn't matter how your day, your last day went. It doesn't matter the challenges of your life. Start on the note of gratitude. It's a great, it's a great asset to open up your year, to open up your day, because you are still alive. And as long as you have life, there's hope. Start with gratitude. Just fill your heart and tell the Lord how much you appreciate him. And then zoom in into prayer. Thank God for the the gift of speaking in tongues. Zoom in. After gratitude, zoom in and command your day by doing Shabala Katani Mosaya. Ikala Pato Mazibitika Araba. This thing that we do, eh, it's not a joke. It is that which the forces of hell panic at. It is that which opens doors that even your, your greatest intelligence cannot open. It is that we speak mysteries that you are not aware of. Things that are about to happen that you don't know. It is this thing called tongues that speaks and nullifies demonic arsenals before it gets to your house. Malashunda kabahada. Lama kabadaya. And if you are here in a charismatic church like this, and you are ask about this tongue thing, you are missing out, my brother. You are missing out great something, great asset. You have no idea how many, what, what many words can your intellect speak? How far your, your intellect can it wrap around why the sea does not extend its border? I want to use my mind. The world is more spiritual than you think. Will somebody lift up their hand and begin to command the year? Command your year. Kabando. Ikonda zazi bado. Araba tuka pata tata. Ayama kama sumata ne. Alubi ato ne kabalaba. I hear you. I hear you speaking mysteries and breaking through breaking through strongholds by commanding your morning and say it shall be well with me 2024 in the name of jesus somebody lift up your voice and command your morning command your year and say this year ah, a thousand times more lift up your voice and let's call upon the name of the lord and you don't know what is happening but doors are opening you don't know what is happening but but the heavens are opening over your head as you call upon the name of the lord shambaya shambaya kandaya 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 rabadaya shumada in the name of Jesus.